In the previous episode, Lulin summoned Commander Tristian to her palace to confirm whether he was the person she had been intimate with on the night of a certain event. However, Tristian's ambiguous responses made Lulin angry and caused her to speak rudely to him. As she was about to leave, Tristian surprised her by saying that he did not understand what Lulin had been talking about all this time and asked her about the mysterious man she was referring to. Now, from here, the setting changes to a beautiful garden within the palace, where two musicians play gentle melodies, filling the air with a sense of peace and happiness. Meanwhile, diligent servants work carefully, ensuring everything is in order for the royal family gathered around the dining table. Among the group, there's Lulin, lost in her thoughts, observing Lulin lost in thought. Her stepbrother, King Bastion, grows concerned and inquires about her well-being, asking if she is still feeling unwell. In response, Lulin quickly apologizes to Bastion for her apparent rudeness and asks if he is addressing her. However, not everyone is pleased with their conversation, particularly Pamela, who, with a touch of hypocrisy, admonishes Lulin, urging her to maintain the dignity befitting a member of the royal family. Pamela expresses her discontent with Lulin appearing distant in the presence of others, deeming it indecent. In response, Lulin offers a simple apology to Pamela without offering any excuses. This prompts a curious thought in Pamela's mind about the unusual swiftness with which Lulin apologizes, leaving her to wonder about the underlying reasons behind such a rapid concession. Eventually, Duke Almondite steps in to defend Lulin, stating that it's understandable because he is aware that Princess Lulin is not feeling well. This declaration, though well-intentioned makes Lulin a bit uncomfortable upon hearing it. Upon learning about Lulin's health condition, Bastion begins to express concern, suggesting she may return if she is not feeling well. However, before he can finish his sentence, Pamela's mischievous dog starts barking loudly at King Bastion, completely startling him. As Pamela's well-trained but mischievous pet successfully executes its master's plan, Pamela turns her attention toward the unfolding scene and dramatically exclaims, Oh my, Count Benico de Harlock Edinburgh Wellington. She scolds her pet, emphasizing that it must not bark at his majesty. While placing a reward in her dog's mouth, Pamela addresses King Bastion, urging him to ponder the circumstances carefully. She further questions whether Lulin had not displayed similar rudeness towards Duke Almondite the previous day. Despite Pamela's efforts to divert the attention, King Bastion persists, urging his mother to at least arrange for a body checkup with a royal physician for Lulin. However, Lulin, perhaps unwilling to cause further concern, declines the suggestion, insisting that she is all right. While the members quietly savor their snacks, King Bastion lightens the atmosphere with exciting news. He discloses that the Holy Nation is actively arranging to send a patron, driven by the challenges posed by the elusive warlocks. King Bastion underscores the nation's keen interest in recognizing and supporting Duke Almondite's dedicated efforts. Additionally, he speculates that due to this support, the Pope might be contemplating a blessing for Duke Almondite in recognition of his significant contributions. In this context, the blessing holds profound significance, representing an honor bestowed exclusively by the ruler of the Holy Nation, the Pope, and patrons chosen from among the archbishops. When an individual receives this blessing, their body is marked with divine protection. This not only enhances their physical recovery and immunity from illness but also designates them as a chosen subject of God, entitling them to the special protection of the Pope. The blessing thus becomes a symbol of both spiritual favor and heightened physical well-being. Pamela extends a compliment to Duke Almondite, acknowledging his achievements and suggesting that his father in heaven must be pleased. In response, Duke Almondite humbly replies that he merely fulfilled what needed to be done, downplaying his accomplishments with a sense of duty and modesty. Upon hearing Duke Almondite's modest response, Pamela comments on his humility, stating, You are quite humble. Amidst the cheerful atmosphere, Lulin is consumed by deep concern on the other side. The prospect of a patron arriving in Brigent troubles her greatly. She fears the potential consequences if the patron discovers her past involvement with the devil, a revelation that could lead to her execution. The weight of this curse has cast a shadow over everything in her life, and she feels as though nothing has gone right since the cursed affliction befell her. Dear viewers, I apologize for the interruption but, if you are watching this segment without having seen the previous two, it may cause confusion regarding the plot. Please check out those videos to fully enjoy the story. The playlist is pinned at the end of this video. Additionally, if you genuinely enjoy my work and would like me to continue providing amazing content weekly, please subscribe to this channel and help us reach 1,000 subscribers. So, let's start again. Noticing Lulin lost in contemplation, Pamela questions her thoughts on whether Duke Almondite is deserving of the blessing. Sharing her own perspective, Pamela believes in Duke Almondite's worthiness, citing his collaboration with the former Duke to apprehend a malevolent woman who brought warlocks to curse others. She points out that others hold a positive opinion of him, especially following his decisive actions in eliminating the warlock threat. 
This revelation leaves Lulin visibly shocked and motionless. Returning to her dog, Pamela intentionally questions Lulin about the shift in her expression, teasingly asking if she unintentionally said something inappropriate, jokingly addressing her dog, Sir Benico. She playfully wonders if Lulin might use the excuse of feeling unwell again for a sudden departure. Pamela's consecutive remarks directed at Lulin left her visibly shaken and uncomfortable. However, for some undisclosed reason, King Bastion remains silent, attentively listening to his mother's critical remarks about Luolin. Over time, the maids begin to gossip among themselves, suggesting that the Queen Dowager is once again subjecting the princess to harassment. Despite feeling sympathetic towards the princess and acknowledging the unfairness of the situation, they observe her being targeted without the ability to defend herself. However, their sympathy raises questions that do they not realize the futility of fretting over the royal family. Isn't it customary for a stepmother to harbor resentment towards her stepdaughter? Regardless, for the maids, it's merely an amusing spectacle, providing entertainment rather than genuine concern. Observing Lulin utterly stunned, Pamela reflects on the satisfaction derived from witnessing her in such a state, considering it a delightful spectacle. The forsaken princess, left isolated and without anyone by her side, seems to bring Pamela a sense of fulfillment. However, just as Pamela contemplates delivering another blow to Lulin, someone stands up abruptly. It is Duke Almondite, requesting permission to take his leave, thereby thwarting Pamela's inner desire to completely shatter Lulin. Upon hearing Duke Almondite's words, even King Bastion becomes perplexed, and Duke's subordinates, not expecting such a turn of events, murmur that they haven't finished eating yet. Even Duke Almondite isn't spared from the maid's whispers as they comment amongst themselves that they hadn't anticipated him being the first to leave a supper to which he was invited by King Bastion. Additionally, they note that the event is specifically organized to congratulate him. Duke Almondite by bowing express his apologize for behaving so rudely towards King Bastion. King Bastion calmly reassures Duke Almondite, telling him not to worry and emphasizing that his loyalty remains unwavering despite the circumstances. This declaration, particularly in front of Pamela and her dog, leaves them with a sense of betrayal. As Duke Almondite requests leave, he goes a step further by asking King Bastion to fulfill another wish, to permit him to escort Princess Lulin to her residence. This unexpected request leaves Lulin in a state of shock once again. Aware of Lulin's condition and Pamela's animosity towards her, King Bastion grants Duke Almondite's wish to escort Lulin, specifically requests him to take care of his sister with due consideration. A little while later, Duke Almondite is seen escorting Lulin to the inner chamber of her residence. At a certain point, she abruptly withdraws her hand from his, assuring him that everything is now fine. Treating her with courtesy, Duke Almondite addresses Lulin, questioning, Princess. Suddenly, Lulin, wearing a disgusted expression, turns towards Duke Almondite and questions whether he expects her to express gratitude. She asserts that there is no need for such formalities and suggests that he pays no attention to her. Duke Almondite is completely bewildered by her words, and as Lulin departs, he remains standing there, frozen in confusion. Moving away from Duke Almondite, she relaxes a bit and contemplates why Commander Tristian mentioned entangling her body with his, a statement that leaves her feeling completely submerged in confusion. She thinks again, worrying if she's in trouble because, if it wasn't Tristian, her attempts to fix things have only made them more complicated. Also, at this point, she can choose to act like she didn't hear anything. Yet, internally, she continues to question who, if not Tristian, was with her that night. Moreover, would she be able to recall his face if she visits the glass house again? In the meantime, Lulin is interrupted from behind. To her astonishment, as they say, speaking of the devil, it's Sir Tristian Jayard himself. With a serious expression, Lulin asks Tristian what the matter is and if he still has something to say to her. In response, Commander Tristian explains that on his way to the banquet after receiving an emergency notice to act as a lieutenant, he noticed there was no one escorting Lulin. Hence, he came to inquire about the situation. Turning her face to the side, Lulin questions him, asking if he doesn't have to go to the banquet now. Before Commander Tristian can say anything, a loud voice exclaims, Princess, it's Duke Almondite, approaching both Lulin and Tristian. And here, the two contenders in the harem journey for Princess Lulin find themselves face to face. Lulin ponders why Duke Almondite has followed her all the way here. Commander Tristian, standing close to Lulin, mentions that she is meeting with Duke Almondite today. He then looks towards Duke Almondite and confirms, you also met with him on that day. As Lulin listens to this, her mind goes completely blank. She exerts pressure on her thoughts, attempting to remember that the man with whom she was involved had deep brown hair. What did the lips that touched her neck look like again? And, she desperately hopes that the man from that night wasn't Duke Almondite. As we wrap up today's segment, Thank you for being with us until the very end. I'll be sharing fresh videos of this manga and exciting new series every weekend. 
Your support is invaluable, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated. Your encouragement keeps the channel thriving, and I appreciate it immensely. Until next time, take care and goodbye.